All right, a polynomial is a sum of terms whose variables have whole number exponents only. Said another way, a polynomial is a sum of terms where all of the exponents that are on, that are on the variables are only whole numbers. Remember, whole numbers are positive um, numbers. So zero is a whole number, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so forth. No negatives, no fractions. Here's some classifications of polynomials. A monomial is a polynomial of one term. The prefix mono means one. Here's an example of a monomial. A binomial is a polynomial of two terms, the prefix bi meaning two. 7x is one of the terms, negative eight is the second. Remember that terms are separated by addition or subtraction signs. A trinomial is a polynomial of three terms, the prefix tri meaning three. X squared is the leading term, negative X is the second term, and then negative six is the third term. Any polynomial that has four or more terms is just called a polynomial, poly meaning many. Here's an example of a polynomial of four terms. Keep in mind that all of these are polynomials. A monomial is a poly polynomial. A binomial, a trinomial are polynomials. A polynomial of one term has a specific name, a monomial. A polynomial of two terms has a specific name, a binomial, and so forth. So all of these are considered polynomials. To be more specific, we can say monomial, binomial, trinomial. Notice that all of the exponents are whole numbers only. Hey, by the way, if an exponent is not shown, it's assumed to be one. The variable has an exponent of one. So all of these exponents are positive whole numbers. So all of these are polynomials. Here's our first example. They want us to factor this trinomial. It's a trinomial because there's one, two, three terms, all right? So when we factor out the GCF, which stands for the greatest common factor, what we need to do is first look at the coefficients only. The coefficients are 10, negative 15, and positive five. The greatest common factor with respect to the coefficients only is the greatest or largest number that is a common factor of 10, negative 15, and five. That is to say, the largest number that can be divided into 10, negative 15, and five. That would be five. Five goes into 10, five goes into negative 15, and five goes into five. So five is the GCF with respect to the coefficients only. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say this trinomial is equivalent to Factoring out of five. Now let, let's leave some space here. Leave some space for the variables that we'll factor out in just a minute. All right. Now, this is how we fill the rest of this in. Now I'm just focusing on the coefficients at the moment. Five times what gives me 10? Five times two gives me 10. So that goes there, okay? Five times what is negative 15? Well, five times negative three is negative 15. Next, five times what gives me five? Five times one gives me five. A positive one, by the way. All right, that's just the coefficients, okay? Now let's talk about the variables. Look at all of your x variables. This is x to the fourth power. This is x to the first power. This is x to the first power. What's the greatest number of x's that they all have in common? You cannot say x to the fourth because this term does not have x to the fourth, right? It doesn't have that many x's. Neither does this one. The greatest number of x's that you can factor out is only one x, or x to the first power. This has an x to the first power. This has x to the first power. 
this has x to the first power. So that's what I'll factor out with respect to the x's right there. And so now, now let's fill the rest in as far as the x's are concerned. Now this is, remember, x to the first power. We can use the product rule for exponents to help us here. Um, x times how many more x's gives you x to the fourth. x times what is x to the fourth? x times x cubed is x to the fourth. x times x cubed is x to the fourth. How do I know that? Well, the product rule says that you would add the exponents. 1 plus 3 gives me 4. Well, that leads me to something else then. I can use subtraction then to figure this out. Look at this. If you had 4 x to the fourth power to start off with in the very beginning, and you factored out x to the first power, what is 4 minus 1? 3. That's how many x's you have left over. Huh, let's see. If this is x to the first, and you factored out x to the first, what's 1 minus 1? 0. That means you don't have any more x's left here. The same thing goes here, x to the first. So 1 minus 1 is 0. That means you don't have any more x's. Let's go for the y's. This is y cubed, y to the fourth, y squared. The greatest number of y's that they all have in common is y squared. You can't say y cubed because he doesn't have that many. You can't say y to the fourth because neither uh, this term nor this term has y that many y's. The greatest number of y's that they all share is y squared. So that's what I'll be factoring out here. Now let's use subtraction. If you had three y's here, y to the third power really, to start off with, what's three minus two? One. So then you have y to the first power left in this term. Let's keep going. What is four minus two? 2. Okay. What is 2 minus 2? 0. That means you do not have any more y's there. Z is last. This is z to the first, z to the first, z to the first. So the best you can do as far as your z's is just z to the first. Now, if you only had one z and you factored it out, then that means you have no more z's left. Same thing goes here, z to the first, and you factored out z to the first. That leaves you with no more z's, and the same thing goes here. So this is the trinomial fully factored. This, so you're done. This is the GCF. 5xy squared, excuse me, 5xy squared z is your GCF, your greatest common factor. Now, if you wanted, so you're done, folks. If you wanted to check your work, distribute this GCF back in, and you will get the original polynomial back. That's how you can check every single time. Look at this binomial, two terms. So it's a binomial. Let's factor. So we're going to factor out the greatest common factor. Now, when you look at your coefficients, you have negative 20 and positive 10. What's the largest number that can go into 20 and into 10? 10. Very good, everybody. I always try to leave some room for the variables. Now, look at your x's here. Um, you have x to the fourth and x squared. The greatest number of x's that they have in common is x squared. Notice, uh, I don't know if you notice the pattern, it's the smallest of the two, the smaller of the two exponents. This is x to the fourth, x squared, go with the smallest exponent. That's a little shortcut. What's the GCF with respect to the y's? This is y cubed, y to the fourth, the smallest between those two is y cubed, so that's how many I'll factor out. All right, here we go. 10 times what is negative 20? 10 times negative 2. Now, if you had 4x's to start, you factor 2 out, how many are left? 2. So this is x squared. 
If you had three y's, or y to the third in the beginning, and you factored out all of those y to the cubed, uh, uh, all of it, then you have no more y's left over. 10 times what gives me 10? 10 times positive 1 gives you 10. If you started off with x squared and you factored out x squared, there are no more x's. If you started out with y to the fourth and you factored out y cubed, 4 minus 3 leaves you with 1. Now, you're not done here because we always try to factor so that the leading coefficient is positive. Let's write that down. So you can see here the leading coefficient, it used to be negative 20, now it's negative 2. We don't like that. Let's factor, continue to factor so that this leading coefficient becomes positive. All we have to do here is factor out a negative sign or a negative 1 out of both of these terms. When I factor out a negative, there it is. I factor out the negative. That means these two terms in here change sign. This is now positive 2x squared and minus 1y. This is now fully factored. Again, if you wanted to check, which I hope you do check some of these, uh, distribute, and you should get the original polynomial right back. All right, so you understand how to factor out the GCF from a polynomial. Now we're going to uh, transition to factoring by grouping. Now, before we factor by grouping, I do want to try to train or coach you um, into remembering that the first step of any kind of factoring problem, the first step should always be factoring out the GCF. Now, what's the GCF for this polynomial? And it is called a polynomial because it's four terms, okay? Let's see, does everybody have a three? No, this term doesn't have a three, neither does this one. Does everybody have an A? No, this one doesn't have an A. Neither does this one. Does everybody have a B? No, this term doesn't have a B. Um, so then we say the GCF is one. Some people like to say there is no GCF, but really the GCF is one. One goes into basically anything, right? So you're not gonna see me factor out the GCF here. Let's factor by grouping. All right, the first step for factoring by grouping is to put all four terms into two groups of two terms. Now my habit, I just have a habit of putting the first two terms together and then putting the next two, the last two terms together like that, making two groups of two terms. Now be careful, the sign in front of the term always belongs to the term, okay? The sign in front of the term always belongs to the term. Now, you're always going to have a plus sign. I always tell my students, always put a plus sign in between your two groups, okay? You know that you can get rid of these parentheses, right? By the associative property of addition, you can get rid of these parentheses right now. If you erase them, you would still have the original polynomial back. The next step in factoring by grouping is to factor out the GCF from each group. Look at this group. What's the GCF here? What do they both have in common? A three, that's right. So we'll factor out a three. Next group, what do they have in common? A B, so let's factor out a B. There. Now, there is um, a sign that I am on the right track, and that sign is that this binomial factor matches this one. The fact that those two binomial factors look exactly the same tells me I'm doing this the right way. Now, the next step in factoring by grouping is to factor out that common binomial factor. The common binomial factor. Factor that out. So here it is. I'm going to factor it out. There it is. And then, and then, what you're left with is 3 plus b. 3 plus b is what you're left with. So times 3 plus b. 
Now, you're done factoring, except usually we write the variable first. I'm going to rewrite this as uh, b plus 3, okay? Instead of 3 plus b, b plus 3. I know that addition is commutative, meaning I can uh, write addition um, in any order I want. So this is the complete factorization. Now, if you wanted to check, so you're done, okay? But if you wanted to check, then you should do distribute. If you distribute like this, like I'm showing, you'll get the original polynomial back. So factoring, ladies and gentlemen, is rewriting um, a sum of terms as a product of factors. This is here a product of factors. It's a binomial factor times a binomial factor. So I want to make sure that you have this in your notes so you know what factoring is. It's going from addition to multiplication. All right, let's factor. Um, this is a brand new polynomial of four terms. Because it's four terms, I'm going to factor by grouping. But before I jump into the factoring by grouping, I want to consider what the GCF is. Notice that everything is divisible by 2. 2 actually is the GCF. But that's not it. That's not all they have in common. Notice that every single term has an X has an x. So I'll also factor out an x from every single term. When you factor out an x out of this, a uh, 2x out of this first term, the 2 is gone. One of these x's is gone, so all you're left with is ax. When you factor a 2 out of this negative 4, you're left with negative 2 and you factored out one of these x's, so that leaves you with bx. The next term, the 2 is gone, the x is gone, leaving you with positive ay. Next, notice that the next term is negative, so I'm going to bring that down, negative, and you'll be left with 2by. All right, everybody, now what I'm going to do is I am going to factor this polynomial of four terms inside of here by grouping. All right, so I'm going to set up my two groups. Addition is right in the middle all the time. Now the 2x came out of every single term. The 2x came out of every single term. So I'm going to introduce another grouping symbol, meaning uh, maybe back brackets, and put the 2x out front. Don't drop the 2x. Carry it with you all the way. All right, so I'm going to put ax and minus 2bx in the same group. And then I'll put ay and minus 2by in the same group. Now, you can group them differently. You can group these four terms differently, but I just have a tendency of doing that. All right? Next, bring down this 2x. Look at this group, and what's their GCF? What do they have in common? x. So factor out the x. That would leave you with a minus 2b. Next. What do they have in common? A y. So let's factor out a y, leaving you with a minus 2b. Notice that we're on the right track because this binomial factor is the same as this one. The next step is to factor out the common binomial factor of a minus 2b. And what remains when you do that? x plus y. x plus y. This is the complete factorization for that polynomial of four terms. Again, you can distribute if you would like to check your work, all right? If you choose to distribute, I have a, a word of caution for you. Um, I would distribute these binomials first. I would do this first. And then, when I'm done, then I'll distribute the 2x. That's how I would do it. All right, good job, everybody. All right, notice that I'm going to example 7 here. I like this example. Um, I want to tell you that um, keep track of what numbered um, example I'm at because the examples that I do in my lessons are very similar to the ones that are in the textbook. I know that a lot of students... Uh, prefer to see a lot of examples. They want to see a lot of examples. 
That's the reason why I take the time to be organized enough to keep track of the numbered example. So if ever you want to see another example, like example 7 that I'm about to show you, you can open up your textbook to 8.6, look at the book, um, the book's example 7, and it'll be similar to the one that I'm doing here, okay? So it's like two for one, okay? So keep track. All right, here we go. Okay, now we're shifting to the last objective, and that is to factor a trinomial, all right? But before we get into that, what's the GCF? GCF is always first. Does everybody have an M? No. Um, do, do 11, a negative 11 and 30 share a common factor other than one? No. So the GCF is just one. All right, here we go. If this factors, and I do say the word if because not all polynomials will factor. If it factors, it must factor like this. And you and I know that whatever we put here and here must multiply, right? You know how to distribute. Must multiply to give you m squared. That leads us to believe that this term must be m and this one must be m because m times m is m squared. Furthermore, you and I know that whatever we put here and here must multiply to give us a positive 30. Wait a minute. The only way you're going to get a positive product is if the signs are the same. A positive times a positive gives me a positive, or a negative times a negative gives me a positive. So which is it? Both positive or both negative? Well, look at your middle coefficient. It's negative. That tells me that this is negative and negative. All right. Next, what you want to think about are factors of this last number, factors of 30. And you're looking for factors of 30 that will sum or add up to the middle coefficient negative 11. All right. So let's go for it. Now, you know both of your factors are negative, okay? Both of your factors are negative. So let's see, negative 1 times negative 30, does that add up to negative 11? No, right? Uh, negative 2 times negative 15, do those add up to negative 11? No. How about negative 5 times negative 6? Do those add up to negative 11? Yes, so those are the correct factors. Right? So one of these gets negative 5 and the other one gets negative 6. Negative 5 times negative 6 is positive 30. Negative 5 plus negative 6 is negative 11. Now, we're done, but I do want to say that if you wanted to check, all you would have to do is distribute, right? Distribute and you'll get this original polynomial back. Now you might be thinking, oh, that's, you know, straightforward, Mr. Uh, Guterres. Um, all we have to do is find factors of 30 that add up to negative 11. Factors of the last number that add up to the middle number. That's true as long as the leading coefficient is one. So you can think that way as long as the leading coefficient is one. If the leading coefficient is not one, things get a little more challenging. Check out this trinomial. Consider what the GCF is. What's the GCF? Well, everybody has a three, and that's it. <laughs> I was gonna say more, but that's it. Um, this last term doesn't have any X's. Uh, the first term doesn't have any Y's. So three is the best you can do. Factor out a three out of every term. That would leave you with 1x squared minus xy minus 20y squared. Let's continue to factor. Please notice that your leading coefficient now is positive 1. In order to get an x squared, the first two terms are going to have to be x and x. Because x times x gives you x squared. Now, whatever you put here and here, 
must multiply to give you a negative number. That tells me that the signs are different. One of them is plus and the other one is a negative. Because a plus, a positive times a negative will give me a negative product. Now, all I need to do now, because the leading coefficient is positive 1, is think about factors of negative 20 that will sum or add up to negative 1. Negative 1. Let me list out a few options. Negative 20. So 20 times negative 1 definitely gives me negative 20 as a product, but it does not add up to negative 1. It adds up to 19. Um, you can keep going. Let's see. Uh, 5 times negative 4. Close. When you add these, you get positive 1. We want negative 1. So I think the signs are wrong. How about negative 5 and positive 4? When you add these two, you get negative 1 as a middle coefficient. So then this is the correct pair of factors. These don't work. So you can see... 5 is the negative factor, and 4 is the positive factor, like that. Now, that's good and all, except 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. I want negative 20 y squared. So in addition to constants here, in addition to the numbers, let each of them have a y variable. That way, 4y times negative 5y gives negative 20 y squared. This is the complete factorization for this trinomial, okay? Again, I want to emphasize if you were to distribute all of this, right, um, you'll get the original trinomial back. If you choose to check that, I invite you to, I invite you to first distribute the two binomials and then distribute the three at the very end. You'll see that you get this original trinomial right back.